Ladies and gentlemen, you join me in the field today because we are going to explore this. And so, what is this I hear you ask? Well, this is the Industry Creativity Heritage Trail. I picked this amazing map up at the exhibition I filmed last weekend. It appears to have been published by the Red Brick Building. So the first place we're going to go is Northover Mill. Now Northover Mill is in that direction, so I guess the best thing we'd better do is hop on the bike. Let's go. This mill dates to the 13th century, possibly even earlier. A mill was built by Glastonbury Abbey and water was diverted from the River Brew to power the water wheel. During its time it's been used by cloth makers, fullers, dyers, quilt makers and tanners. You can see the mill race here. The building was renovated by Beckery Island Regeneration Trust and is currently looking for a new tenant. So the next point is point number two, which just happens to be the red brick building, which just happens to be next door. So let's head that way. Well then, ladies and gentlemen, you've seen it before on the channel. I give it to you once more. Ladies and gentlemen, the red brick building. If you saw my video last week about the exhibition, you'll know that these buildings used to be part of the Moorlands factory. The site was derelict for 30 years but some buildings were saved in 2009 by locals coming together and um, basically doing a sit-in and are now a vibrant community asset with offices, um, there's events goes on in there, there's a really good cafe. As part of the town deal, Building C is being renovated as the next phase will house the Life Factory. Just like to say a quick thank you to the guys who just let me go up and have a look at what's going to be another office. Very nice. I like the planting along the front. That's cool. So that was the red brick building. Now we're heading off to number three on our list, which is the Baileys building, which is just over there. So I'm going to head that way now. The Bailey Buildings. We talked about Baileys in last week's video. This is their building. It dates from the mid 19th century and is listed for its wooden louvered drying halls. Baileys made boxing gloves and famously made the gloves that were worn by both Henry Cooper and Cassius Clay when they fought in the 60s. They made sheepskin coats they made carpets and they made tennis rackets. The company closed in 1992. Funded again by the town deal, the building is going to be restored and will be used once again for light industry. So that was the Baileys building, home with some very famous boxing gloves. Our next destination is down there and it's Glastonbury Railway Station, or rather the site of, because sadly we no longer have one. It used to be part of the Somerset and Dorset Railway. This is the only point at which I slightly disagree with the map and I'll explain why when we get there, but for now, we've got to go that way. And so this is where the map brought me, here. Sadly, that isn't Glastonbury Station, although it is connected with the railway. Glastonbury Station sat on the Somerset and Dorset. In fact, it was the original terminus. And the building behind me here was actually the engineer and surveyor's office where the engineers and people designing the line, running the line, controlling the line, had their offices. The actual station is on the other side of that building there. So I'm gonna take you there and we'll have a look at where the station was. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is where Glastonbury Station was. What is now, a storage yard where they thoughtfully kept the level crossing gates or some level crossing gates.
Remarkably, some of the original station infrastructure, for example this bridge, is still here. The crossing gates obviously aren't original, but a nice touch and a nod to the heritage of the area. So the station, I'm not going to go any further because it's a storage yard, but further down here would have been the platforms. I'm going to superimpose a picture now of what the view would have been like. Stood pretty much here, right there. The line would have come in down across the levels, gone through the station here and out there. So I don't know if you can see the curve in the road there, the lines would have run through here, followed that curve, and if you can see where the cars are going from right to left up there, that's the bypass now. That was the railway line. So they have gone up round that corner and disappeared off that way. The canopy, which would have been on the right hand platform as we look, um, you will see in Glastonbury Market now. So the, the station would have been running right to left across there, going off that way towards West Pennard. This was the terminus, this is as far as it went. But then eventually it, it extended to Evercreech, where it met with the line coming up from Bournemouth, and that's when it got its new name, the Somerset and Dorset Railway. So you may recognise the wall over there uh, from last year, which is one John Mitchell painted. We're here in North Lode Street. At the far end where it joins the main A road, the bypass over there, you can see cars on it. The reason I'm here is because if I'd have been stood here in 1851, I'd have had a very different view to that which I have here now. Because then, this, where I'm stood now, was the site of Glastonbury Brick and Tile Works, where they made, obviously, Glastonbury bricks and tiles. And to this day, if you go over there, beyond that building, over there, there's a, there's a reclamation yard. They still have Glastonbury bricks. You can go in and buy it yourself. A Glastonbury brick, a little memento of our industrial past here in Glastonbury. So our next destination, which is back down behind me, is Glastonbury Town Hall. And I hear you say, why is Glastonbury Town Hall on an industrial heritage trail? That's a good question. I asked it myself, because what I'm about to tell you, I didn't know, and I don't think a lot of people do know. Glastonbury Town Hall's connection with the industrial heritage of this town, I thought, was due to the fact that they held the inaugural meeting that set up the, the railway to Highbridge there, which became the Somerset and Dorset. But no, it has a much more direct link. We're going to go and find out what that link is right now. So, Glastonbury Town Hall as we know it. Well, in the 18th century, this was a silk weaving mill. No, I didn't know that until I researched for this video. But yes, apparently that's the case. Glastonbury Town Hall was the centre of silk weaving in Glastonbury. Who knew? And of course, as you can imagine, the Abbey is the next on our list after the Town Hall. The Abbey obviously was the centre of the town and many industries, including tanning and various other things, took place in there. And the monks ran manors around the town producing things like fish and, and other commodities. And of course, with the Abbey being central to the town from the year dot, it's only natural that when you talk about industrial heritage here, you talk about the Abbey. Many crafts and industries took place in there, including tanning, of all things. And the monks ran the manors around here and the various barns. We're going to see some more of that in a minute. But for now, with the ever mer wonderful Merlin in the background, I'm leaving the Abbey now to head on up to the next position, which is the barn. And it's that way. Ladies and gentlemen, the barn. I'll put a link in the description to an earlier video I did here, but the Abbey barn, which was built by the monks at the Abbey, is a stone and timber barn and is now part of the Somerset Rural Life Museum. It was built to store produce by the Abbey. 
It continued to be used until 1972, long after the abbey had been destroyed. The entire site was renovated recently and is now open again and really is worth a visit. It's a really good way to find out about the industries associated with this area. So now it's time to leave the delightful barn and move on to our final destination. Well, here we are at our final destination. RJ Draper & Co Limited. Well, Draper's is the largest remaining sheepskin manufacturer in the area. This factory was established in 1937 and still makes sheepskin footwear and accessories. The company produces an average of 1,000 pairs of slippers a week. You can clearly see there where the old factory carried on to the right there, which is now buildings. The artwork here is amazing. I did do a video about this. I'll put a link. They're the very last remnant of an industry that kept this area and made it what it was for many, many years. RJ Draper & Co. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, created mostly because of this. I'll try and find um, an address or a link where you can get these. I think they may be in the, in the Glastonbury Centre next to the Town Hall, but I'll double check. Everybody I've showed it to has never seen it before. I think it's a brilliant walk. It's very doable with lots of interesting things on the circuit. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please put a like, maybe subscribe. And if you'd like to know more about any of the sites we visited on this walk, then hey, pop it in the link below. Maybe we can go back and take a closer look. But for now, thanks for watching. Enjoy your walking. Bye bye.